Hey guys, Hippopotamus here, and today I'll be showing you another in-game character strategy on Heimerdinger, the revered inventor. And today I'm just going to be displaying some general strategy and tips and tricks on how to play Heimerdinger. Um, currently, for my room setup, I am running Magic Penetration, Marks, Glyphs, and Quintessences, and I am running Magic Regeneration Seals. And my mastery setup is a 9021 build, primary and utility. And yeah, the game should be starting here soon. So, like I said before, I plan on doing one of these for every character. Just a gameplay video with a little bit of strategy mixed in. And I also plan on more focusing on just my character and not so much jumping around on the to other heroes on the screen but yeah so currently for spells I am running ghost and flash which really as Heimerdinger it's really helpful to have two escape abilities because he is a very 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 squishy champion especially if he does not have his turrets but it really does help to have flash at least other summoners spells that would be useful would either be a uh, flash and teleport is also very very potent because you can teleport to any of your turrets on the map and pretty much anything mixing in with flash would work fine so yeah the game started here Let's just lock onto my character here I start out with a mechy pendant here with two health potions I believe and Basically, for my build, I end up getting three Archangel Staffs, Spell Penetration Sorcerer Shoes, Rabadon's Death Cap, and a Void Staff. And basically, I plan on maximizing the amount of damage I can do with my rockets, grenades, and my evolution turrets. But another good starting item would be Adorn's Ring, if you don't have as much um, survivability or staying power in the early game. I just like using the Mechie Pendant because it supplies me with enough mana regeneration. See, right now I have 18 per 5, which pretty much lets me spam rockets for the most part and keep my turrets down, which is really important for Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is a very, very support-based defensive champion and he excels at pushing the lane and also defending his own. He's good at this because of his passive which basically gives him a free regrowth pendant which gives me 16 HP per 5 which is pretty high for being level 1. Oh and it looks like Talon picked up a kill with Poppy hit bottom. That's good. Always a good way to start the game. Yeah, so creep should be coming out here. And generally, starting off as Heimerdinger, you just want to get as many creep kills as possible. And as you can see, I'm going up against Kale here in mid, the nice looking Judgment Kale skin. And yeah, another thing to mention is when the first couple seconds when you place Heimerdinger's turrets, he gets, they get an attack speed boost. So generally speaking, if you ever want to engage with your turrets, you always want to place them next to the enemy champion that you wish to attack with them generally they will target something that is attacking you but not always so the the turret AI per se is not necessarily the best but it has definitely improved over recent patches so it's not as bad although you do only get two turrets now so and that you get that at rank three but right now I'm just you're just trying to harass with your rockets as much as possible because rockets only hit the first three targets so positioning on your targets are very important and always paying attention to when the creeps are coming down the lane is also very very important you just always want to hit those rockets because early game if you can hit a lot of rockets as you can see Kale has been brought down to a little less than half health already which is pretty good I got a nice push on her with my turret down hitting me with a couple judgments there but no big deal. She heals herself. 
Yeah, she's just pushing back now, so let's let's see what the other lanes are doing. We got Fiddle Scion versus Jarvan and Riven. Oh, it looks like Fiddle's getting a little Oh, double kill, not good. But it's all good. A little bit of Spanish going back and forth. But yeah, mainly is Heimerdinger. You just, you want to survive as long as you can, because once you die, your turrets will disappear. So, generally speaking, you want to kite around your turrets. And positioning of your turrets is also very important. You don't want to stack them, but you also don't want to put them so far apart that they can't hit the target. As I'm doing here, since I don't have rank 3 turret, I will in a minute, so. But you want to place your turrets around right here where this turret is and right around here so your turrets can hit both targets and you have a good range of area that your turrets cover you just don't want to overspread or just stack them because AOE champions or skill shots will just completely take out your turrets but that's another thing you you can use your turrets as a shield which also is very very helpful against champions such as Ezreal or Morgana where you need to be dodging mystic shots the whole game or dodging dark bindings but yeah how you place your turrets and where you place your turrets is very important and knowing where you place your turrets because even if you're not there your turrets can still kill someone especially once you get upgrade upgrade will heal your turrets to full health give you passive cooldown reduction and it will also make your turrets turn to ice and they'll slow the target's movement speed by around 20% I believe. Right now Kale's just chasing me. Oh, Getting a little low here. But she doesn't dive me, luckily, because I know she has flash exhaust, so she couldn't have got me with my flash and ghost up. But yeah, as I was saying before about the turrets, good spots are anywhere in these little small patches of grass and also if you're running with the side lane which is pretty popular for Heimerdinger since he's considered a a mage support would just be in these lanes and it's good to pull off the creeps or if you need a ward and you just don't want to spend the gold on a vision you can drop a turret right here and it'll give you a decent line of sight so it's not too bad uh, let's see Kale's going back luckily I've been able to push and get the upper hand try to shoot some rockets at her but creeps come up no worries though like what I just did right here would be a good example of how you want your turrets because once you get upgrade it protects you this turret protects you from this side and this turret will protect you from this side so if I need to I could pop ghost and then pop my ult and I can almost get away from any sort of situation unless if it's from multiple heroes from the same side and they both have summoners up but most of the time I just use upgrade there to have my turret tank the tower a little bit longer so I can do a little bit more damage with my auto attacks then here comes Kale luckily though my turret starts to get on her oh yeah and that's another thing to mention once your turrets hit level 2 they start gaining the passive piercing rounds I believe yeah uranium rounds where every hit they do they will reduce armor and magic resist by one up to fifty and that is very important during team fights to always pay attention to who has the most stacks because currently with my build with my spell pen boots i have forty around forty spell pen and then fifteen percent of your total magic resist also so as of right now i am doing a hundred percent full magic damage to kale and I like to do a heavy spell pen build because late game, the amount of damage it increases it by is much more than ability power. Because usually when you're stacking all the ability power, you get around 70 to 80. But if you think of it this way, 40 spell pen gave me around 20 to 30 percent extra magic damage. And for a target like a DPS carry that doesn't really have a reason to stack it. I will do a lot of damage to pretty much all of these champions right now. But Jarvan's a little tankier because he's got some defensive runes. And uh, I think Kale, or I thought Kale was coming down bottom, so I decided to place a couple turrets here 
But I find out I think she goes around, so I just ignore her and let her go. But knowing the position of where enemy champions are moving down river is also very important because if you can set up two turrets, pop out, hit a concussive grenade, and by the way, if you hit him with the center of the concussive grenade, it stuns him for almost two seconds, which is very, very nice. But generally, for item build, you want to get the Mechie Pendant built to a tier of the goddess because generally you want a max turret and rockets but you're not necessarily going to be able to spam those moves all the time so you want to be able to get your tier as early as possible generally I get it after spell pen boots but I would actually recommend getting it before because the more mana you spend or the more moves you cast the more mana you get which is very very helpful going into late game and also helps once I start to build my other archangel staffs but this is a relatively short game. I believe it's a 20 minute surrender so I don't get as far but I do believe I get my rabbit ons so it's pretty helpful. Right now score 7-4. Trying to get close to Kale here so I can place my double turret and then upgrade but she runs away and decides to go back. And I try to hit her with the grenade but she moves. And Talon Poppy, just hanging out at bottom. I think they have all of our kills. Let's see. Yeah, two, four. Yeah, pretty much. Fiddlesticks has the other one, but. And this is the situation where you want to be in this Heimerdinger, where you can pull a champion back at around half health and just run away and have your turrets do all the work. And then what you do is you run back in and then you juke back out. It's especially handy when you're in bushes because you just run into the bush and then you run out, rocket, and then run in the other direction. And if you have flash, it's even 